Our gospel for this Sunday comes to us from the sixth chapter of the gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. This just picks up you know, right after you know, the last couple of weeks. It's actually kind of, we're just actually going through. Last week was the story, it was kind of the flashback of Herod killing uh, John the Baptist in reaction to his fear about the fact that what he was hearing Jesus and the disciples doing, he thought John the Baptist had come back from the dead. But you heard the story of what interplayed and what, how Herod killed John. This story, you may notice, though, if you look at the, you know, the insert, you got a couple of verses and then nothing. And then a couple of verses. Well, I'll explain that in a second, but it just happens, folks. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away to the bo- in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. Then the skip. When they had crossed over, they came to land and Esseret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. It's almost like superhero Jesus. He's over here healing people. He's over here healing people. He does all these other kinds of things here and there. You know, I've always been fascinated by superhero movies. Uh, You know, Iron Man did very well, but Aluminum Man didn't do very well. Iron Man stops the bad guy. Aluminum Man just foils their plans. Now, we all have these things in life where we, link, we hook to and we look back at and, you know, we kind of go, yeah, these were just awesome times. You know, some of us got superlatives in high school or college, you know, most likely to. I was voted most likely to hold on to past achievements. Actually, in college, this is true. In college, my major advisor and the the department voted me most likely to need my wife to support me in future. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Now, as many of you know, Jenny, uh, many of you ask her, you know, is he like this all the time? Yes. And see, it's just, the sad fact is we don't have the same sense of humor were unequally joked. So say prayers for her. Jesus is on this side of the lake. Jesus is on that side of the lake. He heals. He heals without even having to touch them. They touch him. He's healed. In between, he does all of these other things that they didn't want to bury us with because he's just so awesome. He feeds 5,000 people. He even walks on water and stills another storm. He is Jesus, man. Is Jesus a superhero? You know, in about six days, in fact, exactly six days, I'll be celebrating 22 years of ordained ministry. And if there's one thing I will definitely share with you is after 22 years of ordained ministry, I still don't know what the heck I'm doing. Especially if I look to Jesus as a superhero. Think about it. Superheroes are cool. Superheroes are neat. 
Superheroes have these amazing special powers, and they're able to do all kinds of things, and they're able to save the day. I grew up, remember, you know, remember uh, Underdog? Any of you remember Underdog? Here I come to save the day, you know? It's amazing. They always come in the nick of the time. They're able to have just the right things, and no matter what, at the end, they will win. Unless it's the and it's the culmination of Ultron, and you have to, or, you know, with, you know, you just have to do two movies just because you're going to milk it for as much money as you can make. But superheroes are really, really neat. And Jesus isn't a superhero. Because what's a superhero? A superhero is not you. A superhero is that other person who was born on Krypton or the billionaire orphan or the eccentric billionaire inventor or got the super serum or got the radiation. When I had my cancer 12 years ago, I remember my brother-in-law telling me that he said, if nothing else, look at it in a good way. I said, what? Good way? He's like, yes. First and foremost, it's not like you're going to lose any hair. <laughs> I had some super words for him. And two, you should, do you, the question I have is, do you get to choose or is it random? I said, choose what? Random what? What are you talking about, Todd? He's like, well, you're going to go through this PET scan, and it says that they're going to inject you with this radio radioactive material. Do you get to choose your superpower? Or is it active? I'm like, what? It's like, come on, Credible Hulk, Spider-Man, come on, work with me here. And I'm like, what are you talking about? But the next morning at 5.30 checking in, and me being as goofy as ever, especially at 5.30 in the morning, trust me, you do not want an early daybreak service from me. <laughs> After I handed in my paperwork, the also equally bedraggled but starting her day dealing with people like me, assistant, I handed my paperwork in and it just stood there and she's like, what? I'm like, I got a question. Okay. Is there a menu? Do I get to choose my superpower? Uh, or is it random? She's like, what? I'm like, you know, I, you know, Incredible Hulk and Spider-Man, you know, the radioactive stuff. She's like, it is too early for people like you. No superpower. I am still who I am. I'm not a superhero. Except for one thing, I am not you. You are you. I am me. But we are part of the body of Christ. We are part of the flock that is gathered. We are part together. We are a sign, a start, of the wholeness that which Jesus was laboring so hard for. But notice that it was far beyond just simple, you're healed. We all know it, when you're feeling sick, you don't want to be sociable. When you're really sick, you can't be sociable. And when you have certain illnesses, you just can't, or society says, stay away. And in that time and place, if you were sick, that was a sign you were wrong with God. You had an infirmity, something, you did something wrong. Each and every time Jesus healed someone, he restored them into their family, into the community, into life. Wholeness. Bit by bit. And you're all going, well, see, see, he's got a superpower. He can do this. He's a superhero. I can't. 
Wrong. In fact, it's sad that we should, skipped over the story that happens in between. It's the feeding of the 5,000, and it's a couple of verses right after we finished, you know, that, that section where that, that first break where, you know, remember, they hadn't had a chance to eat. They haven't really had much time to do anything. But he saw them and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. When it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place and the hour is now very late. Send them away so that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy something for themselves to eat. But he answered them, you give them something to eat. You can. Remember, they just came back from going around and healing people and casting out unclean spirits and doing all of these kinds of things. They were just busy telling Jesus they can do it. Why can't they do it now? Is it because the superhero's here? I don't have to? On a much minor scale, it's kind of like, oh, pastor walked in, he can pray. And everyone else loses the ability to pray somehow. Just remember that at contract time, you don't have a prayer without me then, so, you know, <laughs> pony up. Yeah. But how often we think we can't. 224 jars of peanut butter. If you look out in the screens out there, it talks about some of the mana bags that were put together and the Feed My Starving Children and what was done there. I think of all of the other things that are done in and through this congregation, through community connections of the lot, and youth on their own, and interfaith community services, and all the stuff of the Grace Center, and all these other things. You are doing something. You are bringing a sign of hope, a sign of healing, a sign of love, a sign of care. If you haven't had an experience yet of giving a manna bag to someone who is hot on the side of the streets and you give them water and fruit cups, then take one and do it. We follow the Good Shepherd. Not because he takes care of it in these things but because he includes us. He took care of entry into heaven. That's done. But then he invites us to, you give them something. You care for them. Love your neighbor as yourself. Be a sign of that wholeness. Be a sign of that healing. Be a sign of that hope. He gives us the power to forgive. These are not superpowers, though. Except the world seems to treat them as such. Care, compassion, service, mercy seem to be in short supply. But we are called by the Good Shepherd, by the one who saw and had compassion to extend that compassion, to go out into the world and share the good news in word and deed. It's not a league of superheroes that is created by what Jesus does. It is instead a family that transcends space, time, and all human boundaries. It is a sign of wholeness and healing of a body that lives and breathes and extends its hands out to the world in love, just as he did. And remember that God loves you, and so do I. Amen.